So today we're going to do a walkthrough of the edXL further stats one exam. So this is for the AS, so it's not the second year of study, but this is just the first year of study. So there's only four questions, it's a pretty short paper overall. So let's take a look at question one. And this is a question that's looking at a chi-squared test. So we've got this leisure club that's offering a choice of three activities, 250 members. And the manager just wants to test whether there's an association between the choice of activity and the age of the member. So you're given this table of data. And then part A, a nice easy one marker, we've just got to write down the hypotheses for this test. So part A. So a hypothesis so it's going to be H0. Well my H0 is just the idea that there is no association. So there is no association. Hopefully I don't misspell anything. No association between Choice of activity and age and age H1. Well, that would be an association, so there is an association between choice of activity and age. Okay, so I want to finish writing this down. That's part A done. So choice of activity and age. So a lot of writing really for one mark, but it's a nice easy one marker. Okay, so that just gets us started for this question. Part B is dead short. We can just do this underneath. So another one marker. It wants us to calculate the expected frequency of members age 60 or over who choose snooker. So looking in this column here for the snooker column and it's when they are 60 or over so this row here so to look at the expected we're going to do the total for the snooker um the you know the total number of people who choose snooker so if you add this column up what you'll get is 36 so that becomes 36 we multiply this by the total number of people 60 or over so 4 plus 19 is 23 plus number 3 is 26 so we'll times that by 26, and then all we do is we divide it by the total number of people. Well, they tell us that in the question 150, so you don't even have to add them all up. So divide it by 150. Okay, plug all this in on your calculator, and what you'll get is 3.6. Oh, sorry, you'll get 6.24. I've accidentally copied in the wrong. Uh, that's for the next part, so you get 6.24. So I'm jumping the gun. 6.24 there. Okay. So that's the expected frequency of members age 6 year over who choose snooker. So, part C, um, if we just clear all that, asks us to explain why there are six degrees of freedom used in this test. So part C. So why is there six degrees of freedom? Well, at the minute, we've got three columns and we've got five rows. So if you worked out the degrees of freedom for that, so degrees of freedom using that, that would be, so 5 and 3, well that would be, take 1 off the 5, so that would be 4, times it by 1 off this, so times that by 2, that would give us 8, so that's not quite right, so what's going to happen at some point here is pooling is going to be required for this uh, table of data, so if pooling is required, We've got to spot the expected frequency here, which is less than 5. Remember, we always pull when we get an expected value less than 5. Well, remember, pooling usually always occurs at the tail ends of the, the data. So it's either going to occur down here, down here, or it's going to occur up here. Okay. Well, we've already checked this value here. And remember, it's only going to happen with the smaller occurring values here, you know, the ones that we have occurred. So. We could check this 4. Well, if you check the 4, so you do the total here for this row of 60 and over, so that would be 26, times it by the total of this column, which would be 54. Divide that by 150, and this is greater than 5. You actually work this out. So we know it's not this one here. So we now just got to look kind of at these three values here. Well, that one's large, so I'm not going to bother checking that one. And this one here, this was 6.24, so it was pretty close straight away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the snooker one again. 
So, if I check this nuclear one, that's going to be 15 times 36. So 15 times 36. Okay, because that's the total. 36 is the total of the column. 15 is the total of the row. So 15 times 36 divided by 150. Work this out, and what you get is 3.6. Okay, so that's where my 3.6 just came from. Now, because this is less than 5, we have to pull. So pooling required. So pooling is required, which means you'd have to pull these two rows here. Okay. So my table now is a 4 by 3. So 4 by 3. Well, because it's 4 by 3, we can look at the degrees of freedom. That would be, take one off this, so that'd be 3. Take one off this, that'd be 2. So it's 3 times 2, which is equal to 6. So therefore, we've shown... We have shown y six degrees of freedom is required. Okay. So we're basically then we're just on to the very last part of this question. And it gives us the test statistic, which is nineteen point five eight three. We've just got to complete the test, basically. So we're given that it's a 5% level of significance. And we've already got the hypotheses. So all we've literally got to do is just get the critical value. So test statistic, 19.583. Critical value. Okay, so just use your edit, uh, your edit Excel formula book for this. Remember, 5% level of significance. Do this on your formula book, and what you get for the critical value is 12 point five nine two and I mean your degrees of freedom was six okay so they even give you the degrees of freedom so you didn't have to worry about that so this one hopefully is quite straightforward so now we compare the test statistic to the critical value and because the test statistic is greater we have to reject so therefore we reject h not reject h not and what we can say is that there is evidence there is evidence to support the claim to support the claim okay and there we have it so that's question one fully complete